So, thank you much, uh, very much for inviting me here today and also thank you very much for this academic uh, introduction and I hope uh, that you see some of the facts you just explained in the projects I will show, which uh, I'm glad are all type 3 projects um, and they are quite different, actually they are all the same, they are uh, venues for, for concerts, concert halls, but in, in a uh, different um, way and um, actually it's all about you will see that that it's all the same sort of venue but uh, the the demands are very different so the the client what they want to do the program the budget and so on and i hope you see also a wider range uh, of approaches the first project i would like to show you is a quite crazy and and for us actually as architects very funny one Everybody who is familiar or was familiar with uh, off uh, culture in Berlin before the fall of the wall might know the Tempo Drome. This is a very special story. A, a former nurse who inherited heritage, uh, half a million uh, mark. Uh, instead of buying a, a fancy house in south of France, she actually bought a circus tent and uh, put it right in the middle of the um, Potsdamer Platz, because in that time it was just an empty desert. And she made culture, like, and she really invited very famous people like Nick Cave and Iggy Pop. They all played in that tent, and it was very fam famous. And as you might know, after the, the fall of the wall, actually, there was heavy construction on Potsdamer Platz, so she had to move. She had to move several times, and, uh, and she was already uh, middle of 50. She said, okay, I'm tired of moving. I'm too old for that. Now, uh, now I want to have a fixed a built tent. So there was a competition. And actually, it's a very famous uh, location for the city. The city provided a very uh, prominent site. I have to look for it myself. It's uh, here, here it is. This is actually the location of the former Anhalter Bahnhof, so-called gate to the south, because all the trains coming in from the south arrived here. And you can still see the tracks, which are not in use anymore. Uh, which define the, the city uh, fabric. And actually, this whole area is transformed into a park since uh, the la last 20 years. And so that means that our building would be the, the entrance point to that park. So the idea was, as you could see this in, in the sketch from the competition phase, that we actually put a public platform on top of that park. And then on that platform, we made, uh, obviously, a tent on it. Um, so this is a section from the building which is half dig into the earth so that you can provide a public passage on top of the, of the building. And these are the, the big stairs in front. And this is actually the back. You can still see the old platforms of the former Anhalter Bahnhof. And here you can exit. So actually, even if you don't have any ticket, this is a real public building. You can walk across it every day. And in fact, you can even try to climb that roof, which is of course forbidden, but it's a sort of sport in Berlin to do so. Um, as you can see from this picture, it's really in the city center, and one problem is that it's also right in the middle of a, a, a living area. So as, as they still do a lot of rock and pop concert, uh, sound was not only um, room acoustic, but a lot about um, uh, acoustic insulation, so sound protection. So actually, you can see a, a picture of the roof construction. During construction, it's a mainly a steel structure. But after uh, the steel stru structure, which could already support the whole roof, we put on 12 centimeter thick concrete uh, uh, panels on top uh, for, for sound insulation, insulation reasons. So this is a view from the inside. This is a detail. So this is the layer of the steel structure. This uh, is the... These are these uh, concrete uh, uh, panels. And then there is on the inside a second layer of uh, five centimeter thick uh, gypsum board, and, uh, which is independently fixed to the steel structure. So actually we generated two independent heavyweight uh, uh, layers which could uh, um, uh, vibrate in different frequencies. So this is for the uh, sound insulation. At the same time, you can also see the room acoustic device we did. Actually, we had this layer for sound insulation, which is towards the inner side, uh, the uh, reflecting uh, part of the ceiling. And then we added, you will see, later see what happens uh, visually. These actually are 
this is uh, was a um, sort of low budget project, and this, these are panels which are actually used for insulation. Heraklitplatten in German. I, all those in German who knows what it is, but actually, so they are let's say sound transparent. So these uh, uh, stripes actually are absorbing, and these are the reflecting areas. And this is the re that result. This sort of tiger surface of the roof. So we have actually by th by the shape we can make a very diffuse sound and we have this uh, um, absorbing and reflecting area. So this is what you explained, that you really always have to try to incorporate the acoustic demands but not make it obviously uh, visible that, okay, they had to do something absorbing here, but we always try to make it as a sort of self-evident, self-explanatory way that uh, the room acoustics are part, an integral part of the architecture. This is a view into the lobby space. Um, the next project is in China. Actually, we work a lot in China, and we um, could already build four so-called grand theaters in China. And the grand theater is a combination of an, an opera house, a concert hall, and a multifunctional hall, and sometimes even in that case, there even was a small museum and a hotel. So normally a very huge complex. And Building in China is, 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 is very special, it's quite challenging and, and fast, but they have a very different culture thinking about um, not only architecture, maybe everything, but um, you always have to, have to have a very strong visual picture, and you have to tell a story. So it's not, uh, it's not only uh, to, to make a good design, but there always has, has to be a very close connection to, to a story to tell especially if it's a big public building, you have to show it to the mayor and he really has to, first he has to love the story and if he loves the story, normally he also loves the building. So this is um, Qingdao, which is uh, along the, the northeastern coast of China. Some of you might know it was place of the sailing uh, competition of the Olympic Games in Beijing. And the location uh, is roughly here and this, this green area you can see is a very big mountain range, the so-called Laoshan uh, uh, mountains, which are very big and obvious, but also have a very sort of holy um, uh, meaning for, for the city. So it's very important. These are pictures from this mountain, who actually starts right from the, from the sea and raises up to more than 1,000 meter in a very short distance, so a very impressive uh, mountain range, and we referred to this mountain range and said, okay, this opera house is like the, like your Laoshan mountain, which is hiding in the clouds and with the fit, foot in, in, in the sea. So uh, the location actually is also very close to the, to the sea, to the beach. So in the north, you can see the mountain, and in the, uh, and very close, you also see the, the, the sea. So this is the building, how it looks like today. So, uh, maybe I don't have to explain, but I do explain it. So these, of course, are the, are the mountains. This, this, these are the clouds which uh, surround these mountains, so the, the mountains slightly exceed the clouds. And um, the building itself is, is also like a landscape view. So we have many large flights of stairs. You can all go up and go down, so that you really can wander around like in this mountain landscape. And this very big roof generates a very big public space, which is uh, also, again, same idea, open to the public, so you can enter it whenever you want. And public space is very scarce in China, so people live in very small apartments, so they really appreciate these public spaces. And during planning, we had a lot of discussion with the client, of course, they always asked, what do you need these huge stairs for? And all that space, can we make it smaller? And we said, Oh, you will see this will be a, a very public place, so a very important place for your city, not only because you, have no, you offer nice concert, but you really offer a public space. So this is the, the side plan without the roof. Here is the, the opera house, so this is the, the stage uh, tower here. This is the concert hall. Here was the, or still is, the multifunctional hall, the mentioned hotel, the small museum. But you can see actually the, the big gesture that Actually, this public path is linking the, the city with the, uh, with the beach, with the sea. 
And these are the, this is the entrance to the opera hall. The opera hall is in this classic uh, red color. So, um, and you can see that this, this stone-like mountain shapes, they continue towards the inside. And you always can look into the, these small gaps and see the, the red color of the opera hall. And uh, towards the inside, we continue this uh, floating shape of the roof by these uh, light lines inside the lobby. And this is the, actually the, the opera hall. Um, this is how it, it looks like in reality. And this is the other direction the uh, entrance towards the concert hall, with, which is uh, held in this classic wood, like the, the instrument, so um, a very direct um, translation. This is the lobby space, again, with these lines and stone walls uh, combined with the wooden um, elements of the hall. And this is a section through the hall. This is actually technically more or less a so-called shoebox Hall, so which is a longitudinal hall. In, in our case, it's slightly shaped as a hexagon, like you could see from the, from the side plan, but in the technical terms, it's still a shoebox hall. And here we, we referred again to the story about the sea, so the waves actually, so, uh, which is uh, quite beneficial in terms of acoustic because you can make very soft and smooth uh, differentiated surfaces, so we had more a uh, more diffuse uh, uh, surface here in the ceiling, but the walls actually, which in fact have been incorporated with Knauf, as far as I remember, they have these wave-like shapes um, and make this very vivid pattern. This is how it looks like, how the spaceship looks like in the night. And uh, finally, another project from Dresden, which is actually uh, mainly a refurbishment of an existing building. So I tell you a little bit more about the story or history of this building. This is Dresden after Second World War, still in 1953. So all what's left of it. So some who know Dresden see the Zwinger and the, the, uh, the Schloss, the castle here, but the, the rest was more or less demolished. And as part of the reconstruction of Dresden, uh, the, the, um, the city wanted to install uh, a place of meeting of culture in the very center of the city, actually, uh, in, in this uh, place. And um, there was a competition. And in the beginning of the 50s, the, the um, how to say, the, the Russian influence not only was political, but also very in cultural ways. So they said, you, this is how a cultural building looks like. Uh, according to Soviet uh, ideas, and they, they made a competition and okay, they said, okay, in, in Dresden you always have these towers, so this should be a very perfect combination. And uh, there was a competition, nothing happened, maybe also due to the reason that combining a concert hall and a tower is actually, as we could see in Hamburg, is quite difficult um, or expensive. And so, uh, and actually it seems they didn't have um, money, so there was actually a, a second competition in the end of the 50s where already this, this cultural idea changed uh, also under the influence of, of the Soviet Union. So modernism was the thing now. And this is the uh, competition, the participants. You can cl clearly see the, the bonnetist approach. You can also still see the tower. And actually the only one who made no tower who won the competition. So in competitions always you never know when, but sometimes it makes sense to not follow the rules. So this was the um, winning scheme um, from Mr. Wheel and Mr. Hange, and they made a very, uh, let's say, Miesian, simple, block-like uh, podium with a very uh, filigree uh, cupola on top. And they started constru constructing it. This is how it looked like in the end of the 60s when it was finished, you immediately see that they could not unfortunately accomplish the, the, this uh, filigree cupola, but made a more classic style uh, copper clad um, hexagonal roof, which also so shows the position and size of the uh, central hall. Um, and actually they, they left one floor due to, uh, in order to save some cost. And actually this so-called culture palace, culture palace, is, is very famous and was very much beloved in whole Dresden. And every Dresden 
uh, citizen went there at least once and, and, and uh, because they had a very wide range of, of cultural programs. So they had classical concert and but, uh, theater plays and also for children very famous shows. So there was actually, um, this, uh, they really love their so-called Kulti, that's how they call him in, in Dresden. But in the um, 2008, they had to close it. This is the uh, today's uh, look uh, of Dresden from, so you can see the very central location. This is the Frauenkirche, Altmarkt, Neumarkt. Um, actually, they had to close the building due to lacks of uh, fire security and all these safety uh, reasons. And actually also, they could not really earn enough money with it. Um, so they decided to completely refurbish it. And the, the thing actually is that um, there are two very famous A-class uh, orchestras in Dresden, the Dresdner Staatskapelle playing in the uh, Zampa Opera and the uh, Dresden Philharmonics, which actually had to play in this hall. And if you are somehow familiar with, with acoustics, you see that this definitely is not a concert hall, but it actually is more like, it's a multifunctional hall. So it's for, good for Congress and so on and for shows. And um, here you can see the shows, and on this stage they had to work like crazy to somehow get some sound of, out of this hall. So it's, it's much, uh, the, the problem actually that it's as wide as deep, which is uh, definitely uh, not good for classical or uh, in a concert hall. So a, a simple rule is like shoebox is two, two to one. So actually the um, competition was to, to build a new hall, but also to add much more program into that building. So actually there also is, or is um, a large library, actually this is Germany's largest public library, which is also integrated into the building. They have um, the, the concert hall with these related service functions. Um, there is also, of course, a restaurant, there's a tourist information, and there's a, uh, in Dresden, at least famous cabaret theater, so-called Hercules Keule. Um, and uh, I think one reason uh, we won this competition was that we actually did not functionally separate these uh, different functions, but we united it. And actually the, the lobby is serving all the functions. So actually this is what we call an, an open house. So you enter the building and you can reach all the different functions uh, at the same time. So we tried to have sort of 24-7 uh, uh, use for this building. And this is actually how it looks like after uh, the renovation. So we try to make it as transparent as it was actually designed in the first place. And you can see this idea of the open house. This is actually the lobby reaching through all three floors, which is serving the hall, but here also the, um, uh, the library and also the cabaret and the restaurant and so on. So actually um, the building uh, what is listed. So all this, the, the area except the hall, had to be more or less um, uh, refurbished. So this is before and after, you see it's more or less the same. Actually, we, we found on old pictures, which were not black and white, uh, that they in the beginning had this very fancy coral red uh, carpet, which was actually blue when we started planning. And we thought this is a very fresh and nice color and brought it back to the, to the, um, to the building. So actually it's more or less a, a refurbishment. We had to, here this is German building code, we had to hire the <laughs> railings by seven centimeters. This was no discussion, we had to, so we introduced these glass railings to get these seven centimeters. But in the end it's a, it's a very simple functional building which, which more lives from the relation to the outside. So you can read in the library and, and look towards the Frauenkirche. And this is the, the, the big lobby facing the Altmarkt which is actually that, that mixing space where you can you go there with your smoking for the uh, concert and you meet the teen picking up his comic coming from the library. So this is a very vivid place and a very democratic uh, place and actually people um, really like it also in, in that mix because they, it has always been a very public and, and, and citizen-bound uh, building. This is the... Um, cabaret uh, stage underneath the big hall. So now, finally, I come to the, to the actual concert hall. Again, you can see or in the competition it was that you have to preserve this. In this hall, you can completely demolish. So you can do whatever you want in that 
uh, building window it was called, so this could be completely demolished and you could establish a, a new hall. This is, was our uh, competition design. Um, uh, so basically a wine yard hall, because it was not explicitly asked for, but they wanted to, to have, they had all this experience in their, uh, in their horrible old hall that, this, their, that they are facing this huge um, uh, uh, auditorium, so that they wanted to have, a, uh, that the auditorium, auditorium is very close. And also, of course, based on this former shape, we thought uh, to make a wine yard hall is, um, is very, is a good idea. Actually, not everybody did this, so, but we did do so and won the competition. Um, so there, actually, we have this, this wooden uh, shell as, as the button with the terraces and uh, this very bright um, ceiling and, and walls. So we wanted to um, reconnect, or we didn't want to have a wall and a ceiling, but let this wall and ceiling become one like in, like in a cave to make a very, uh, very nice and, and, and cozy space which surrounds you um, uh, very closely. And as, you, as, uh, as both of you said, or three of you, actually it's always the, the visual appearance is super important for in the end what you hear. So when you enter a hall and you think it, it might look strange, the concept will not be good. So actually this, this, this it's what we wanted to have is something still fresh but still cozy and, and they had a very specific idea how, um, how the, the, the hall should sound like, not only look like but sound like. And um, they said, okay, I come to, the, to this a little bit later. Um, this is actually the, the, the built um, uh, tier of the hall. You can see that first of all, it's, it's the, the lower tier is much smaller. It's more or less two on one proportion. So we gain a lot of area at these lateral sides we, because we actually don't need them or can't use them due to acoustic reasons and have to fully expand in, 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 in that direction. And uh, this is actually very interesting. So we could, in this space, we could use all the services like toilets, bars, and cloakrooms and so on. But um, more or less, by occasion, we also uh, generated very interesting rooms, um, which are here marked in red, which uh, follow actually this, this, this old outline and these shapes of the concert hall. And these are actually the, the, the um, rooms to, to get to the hall, which is also, say, the, the sound lock area. But these are very interesting spaces, which are like an interface between the, the historical or refurbished um, lobby or the, the, the entrance area and the modern and new uh, concert hall. Now I come back to this, to the sound. Um, in the bidding documents they said they want the, the warm Dresden sound. So we thought, okay, maybe our wooden base is already quite warm, should be okay. But uh, we won the competition and then we said, okay, what do they really want? And uh, as they have an existing orchestra, who maybe might describe how it, how, what they want. We all, in that case, already had an uh, acoustic designer, a poet from the Netherlands, and then actually made a, a, a journey through, I don't know, eight or 10 concert halls in Europe. So mainly vineyard halls, but also classic shoeboxes like Concertgebouw in Amsterdam and so on. But, um, and this was really interesting because this was like, a, we, we got a questionnaire for each concert, even changed places in, in the break. And then you, you had to mark, okay, do you hear the violin? Or do you think the, the, the bass is strong enough? And so on. I'd say for, for us as architects, it was more, it was quite astonishing how much you, you, you can differentiate, even if you are not a, a, a specialist, a musician or an acoustic designer. But uh, the, the real process was that the acoustic designer became an idea of what the musicians in fact liked or wanted. So after that trip, it seemed to be, um, yeah, they seemed to have understood what they want and it seemed to, uh, that it worked out quite well. This is actually um, our competition design with the acoustic model and this is what it became in the end. Um, so what you, you can see several things. First of all, um, it, we, we had to gain much more volume because they have a, a 
quite long reverberation time of 2.2 seconds, which was part of that warm sound idea. So we, we had to use a lot of volume, which was actually um, uh, difficult because we couldn't go where we had enough space at the lateral sides, but we had to go to the top where actually the existing roof was. So the, the, the roof has, hadn't been demolished or removed during construction. We could save it the whole time. So that's, for example, where we have this. Well, here, here you can imagine there was the beam. So we slightly had to get our roof and gain some more space here. So first of all, we had to gain more volume. And second, we introduced a, a second uh, a row of balconies. So in the competition, we just had one because the acoustic designer, or actually the problem with the, with the wine yard, which is, goes like this, is that the, the acoustic energy very quickly, let's say, goes away, or the, the time that it comes back to you by reflection in the ceiling is quite long. In a shoebox, this distance is, is, is much shorter and more direct. So um, actually, um, we had to introduce a second tier so that by these so-called, they, they called us back kickers. So we had more areas which directly kick the sound back to the audience. So this is exactly what you said. This is a really, a really long and intensive dialogue between, uh, between acoustic design and architect. Because, of course, in the first place you say, okay, it's, it looks so nice, I don't want a second balcony, so why? But in the end, it's really, it's a give and take, but I think in the end, uh, we, we were quite satisfied, the, uh, the acoustic designer too. Um, another thing is that you also can see that actually he didn't want these parallel lines, so we had to slightly bend them. And with all these things, which, which first question your design, we tried to make it, uh, we tried to make the problem become a design idea. So we, we, we started to integrate these lines to become also part of these balconies. So here you can see we more or less separated the white and the wooden world. And, and by this movement, we try to give it a very dynamic uh, integration of, of wall, ceiling, and balconies to become one. Uh, of course, this was done in a, in a uh, computer model, what we already saw before, quite complex. But in the very end, even today, um, the computer models are not consistent and, and, and powerful enough to really simulate everything, and then you really build a one to 10 scale model. So it's obviously you can, you can somehow see the scale, and uh, there are, um, these are the, this is the auditorium, so every cone is one person, which is mainly in acoustic design an absorber. Um, and they have many microphones in different areas, and instead of music, they make some little, um, uh, how to call that, some, some sound, and then they measure. And in fact, after this model, we really had to uh, rearrange absorbing error, reflecting error. So this was quite important in the end for the, for the final detail design. Yeah, and this is how it looks like in the end today. It has been opened up last, last, uh, last year. We, um, we took this, this fresh red from the, from the carpet, from the, from the lobbies into the hall, to have, to have a certain connection, not to completely separate old and new, but to, to become in one integrative uh, unity. And this is in, in full use, so it um, has around 1,600 seats. This is Symphony of the Thousand, so this is uh, completely filled up with a chorus, but of course, for normal or more uh, s smaller orchestras, these are, of course, also seats for the uh, public, for, for the guests. You can see it here. We are very lucky that we even could uh, get an organ, which actually uh, wa was to be omitted because uh, the, the budget was very limited and the Dresden citizens, they loved their kuti so much that they actually could spend more than one million euro by donation to, to build that organ uh, also in time, which was quite difficult actually. Um, and now they have this hall. For us, this was a very big success, actually. We, we even made it to the front page, which is not very often for an architectural uh, event or, or opening. I think due to three reasons. First, um, the, the orchestra was very, or is very satisfied with that sound they got, because they, they, in the first, uh, they had their first um, rehearsals, and, and in, it sounds a bit cheesy, but some really started crying, because they were so overwhelmed that they now have their, their own 
space. They really worked hard in that old hall, and now they have actually they have a better better uh, concert hall than the a little bit more famous Dresdner Staatskapelle next next door. So uh, they are actually quite proud. Um, and another thing is that this was an example of. Uh, um, of refurbishing one of these uh, public GDR buildings. So maybe some of you might know the former Palace, uh, Palace de la Republic, Palace of the Republic in the very center of Berlin, which had been simply been demolished and now replaced by a, a, a fake castle. But um, this is, was also an example that, that, that people said, okay, we, we can uh, modernize these buildings and make them part of our history. And, um, and actually, finally, uh, this, especially the Dresden citizens, they were very satisfied with the building because there were a lot of discussion. There was even one year break in the planning process because uh, there were some lawsuits. Uh, if, we, if it was allowed to demolish the hall and so on and so on, in the very end, everybody was really happy that they, that they got actually their culti back, but in a completely new functional layout. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much.